So, Sleuth, I mean, it started as a play, then was made into a movie, what, 35 years ago, yeah. with Olivia and Michael King. Indeed. And so, so why remake it? Uh, the call came through and they said the script was by Harold Pinter and I said, oh, Harold Pinter, the Nobel Prize winning uh, playwright who's probably the most performed playwright of the 20th century <laughs> and uh, something of a genius and it's Michael Caine, the multi-Oscar winning actor who I admire unreservedly and it's Jude Law, brilliant young actor like my friend here. Uh, let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a really quick yes, actually. Were you nervous about, about directing uh, uh, Kane and also, I mean, working with Harold Pinter? Uh, only about 150%. <laughs> um, I mean, it was great to have Harold in the room. I'm not used to having people actually in the room. You know, you try and get hold of Mozart or Shakespeare for a rewrite uh, and they're nowhere to be found. You leave messages, they never call, they never write. <laughs> uh, so to actually have somebody in the room, you know, was, uh, was fantastic. And he was surprising. He's, 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 the impression is of a, uh, I don't know if you've seen him, he's a wonderfully sort of handsome, dark, saturnine fellow, he's very intense. He does you the compliment of listening. So the, the pressure then is having something interesting to say, but he was, he was a great collaborator and it was wonderful to be able to change things and suggest things and be part of a relationship with somebody who I first saw on the back of a, of a, of a play script when I was 16 in Reading going to the second hand shop, uh, you know, wondering uh, how you found speeches from modern plays to go to drama school with. Yes. So yeah. it was a dream come true, him and then Michael Caine in the same room. It was quite well, something. You, I saw a quote of yours where you said that, that he's a great old fashioned screen star, that's what he oh. is. I mean, how do you define that? What do you mean by that? Well, he has the great capacity to do nothing. There is a, what I would call, a, I, I think, I'm speaking immodestly, but it's on his behalf, there is a wonderful screen moment in the movie where after a very dramatic piece of action we hold a close-up for 24 seconds of Michael Caine, very tight, in profile. He's done something very dramatic. He, Michael Caine, chose the moment when it was very important to be still uh, there's no music, there's no extra bits and bobs. It's Michael Caine simply looking. Now, you might think it's just, uh, you know, you look over there and you hold it. Uh, it's not quite as simple as that. And what you get is a sense of the experience of, I don't know, 100, 110 movies brought to bear on a perfectly judged moment in the drama where the landscape of the film, for a moment, for 24 moments actually, is Michael Caine's face. His capacity to analyse his intelligence, his compassion, his um, you know, possibilities for suggesting mystery. I found it absolutely riveting. In fact, I've been trying to copy him ever since. <laughs> I did a picture just recently. I thought, I'll try and do it like Michael did it. Uh, stillness. Stillness and an understanding of what concentration for that machine is. That isn't actually acting, because what he does is being, it's behaviour. He produces yeah. behaviour. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, because I, I, I know the moment you speak of, and, and, uh, and you're studying the landscape of his face. Yeah. There's like shadows going up, but there's not. Um, it, and that's exactly it, isn't it? It's, it's quite it's something. It's mystery of it It all. is mystery, <laughs> and you don't know what it is, except you know it when you see it. And, you yeah. know, it's, it can be fairly intimidating. There was a moment, I remember, when he and Jude Law, Jude is doing a wonderful job in the picture, uh, and they have a scene together, and it's a tight two shot, so the heads are like this. And we've been shooting for a bit, and, it, you know, it's a very funny picture, it's very sort of thrilling, it does all its job as a thriller and everything, uh, but they have a very intense moment, so there are the two faces, and I'm, you know, it was one of those moments, I think, Christ, Jude Law, Michael Caine, these two great British actors, and uh, we start the scene, and then uh, Jude dries, which is highly unusual, he'd been very, very, sort of, on top of this great pro, the two of them had known it, you know, backwards for a long time. And, uh, you know, the way it goes, and I, I took him to one side, I, I said cut, took him to one side, and I said, are you all right? He said, oh, I'm not really. I thought, oh, Christ, we're, we're in a bit of trouble here. I said, what is it? He said, I just realised that I was in a two-shot with Michael Caine. <laughs> um, I said, but you've been in two shots with Michael Caine all the way through the film. He said, no, but it just hit me. It just hit me. I said, I said, well, I said, I don't know what to do. What, what was going through your head at that time? He said, I can't tell you. I said, go on, tell me. I said, I'll tell you what was going through my head. I looked at him, I was this far from his face, and all I could think of was, you were only supposed to blow the bloody doors <laughs> off! <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 I mean, it's wonderful. I mean, you, you, it's true with Michael, isn't it? That whenever you see him, you, 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 that accent immediately comes into the way he speaks, the manner that he has comes into your mind. Yeah, it, it does. And also for this, he, he's a wonderful, uh, he's wonderfully apt for, for this very excellent uh, pen to screenplay. They were at the same school a few years I apart. I didn't realise that. Both, yeah, yeah. both uh, East End lads, he knows that milieu. He's a bit, I mean, mind you, he feels he could have done perhaps a bit more of it, uh, you know, because he said, uh, I was in Harold's first play. <laughs> yeah, he loved me, and I love being in it. And I was so thrilled to get the second job. 
50 years later. <laughs> uh, and the so I tell you what, you know, I, that's, I'm so sorry, it's a terrible impersonation of Michael. You do, Mike. Go on, you do, no, Mike. No, Go I on, you do. I can't do, do one that. line no. of my, my no. name is Michael Caine. Uh, my, my name is Michael Caine. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Caine. I told you before. Can you remember Michael Caine? No. I can't. I'll tell you what, you know that one of the funniest things I saw on the shoot was uh, we, we had to do something together and, and uh, uh, they asked uh, Michael about his great friend Sean Connery and he said, yeah, I can do an impersonation, Michael, uh, Sean Connery. You want to hear Michael Caine doing Sean Connery? It's, can you imagine? It's impossible. He says, uh, so, mush, mush a mono pano. <laughs> Oh, I can't, oh, I can't assume <laughs> the CQ. I mean, it's impossible. You also, of course, again, like you, you worked with Woody Allen, didn't you? I did. I'll tell you how I got the job. Um, <laughs> the uh, six months before I was due to do this film called Celebrity, a letter arrives. It says, Dear Kenneth Branagh, would you please look at the part of Lee Simon? When I wrote this part, I realised there was only one actor in the world who could play it. Alec Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not available. <laughs> so, he went on. He went on. He said, uh, he said, so I thought, I, for a while I considered Mel Gibson. <laughs> and of course, we're always up for the same parts. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but, it, but in the end, in the end, decided that you would be more correct. And so, with that ringing endorsement, uh, I read further down the, uh, the letter, and it said at the end, oh, and just bear in mind, Kent, that the character of Lee uh, is basically a loser, but he is attractive to women. <laughs> Therefore, no facial hair. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I thought, well, I'll have an interesting six months, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and how was it? Did you like, like you? Were you fascinated by it? I mean, basically. completely fascinated. Yeah. But I mean, I, I worship the pictures that he's done, and yeah. I've always been a fan. It was uh, fantastic to be to be there. As you were saying, the, the you. I mean, he'd turn up pretty late in the day, wouldn't he? I mean, you know, you get a, you'd hear something saying he's he's five minutes away, he's two minutes away, he's one minute away. You'd be ready to go. He'd come in, he'd say action, and off you off you went. So you know, he, in that sense, he put an enormous amount of faith in you um, and I, you know when you did things like we were in a scene in Elaine's restaurant in New York there were six of us Winona Ryder and Hank Azari and the camera was moving around the outside and you just couldn't help but think oh we're in a Woody Allen film mm. it's one of those shots where the camera mm. goes around the outside of the yeah. table it was fantastic all right okay so when is um when is Sleuth out next week, is it? November 23rd. Sleuth is all over the country. All right. And uh, uh, the and following week, November 30th, the very following week, um, uh, Magic Flute, also all over the country. So, so please... It's going to general release? Uh, yes, it is. Excellent. Yes, which I'm oh, thrilled about. Yeah. So I hope uh, people uh, take, a, take a punt on it. It's, uh, I'm very, very proud of them both. Kenneth Brown, thank you very much indeed. Kenneth Brown. Thanks. Sir. Thanks to Kenneth Browner, to Ian McGregor, Paul Merton and KD Lang. From all of us here, it's a very good night.